Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions, and I'm back with another compliance tip of the week. Today we're talking about NIST SP800171 Control 3.13.11, employ FIPS validated cryptography when used to protect the confidentiality of CUI. Oh yeah, this is a really fun one because, uh, <laughs> like any of this is fun. I'm just kidding. No, it is fun. Uh, FIPS validated cryptography is a very interesting, controversial target, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ding the internet. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm gonna get some comments below here. I'm sure on this one. So, uh, but look, a couple things about FIPS validated cryptography. One is you know the government's verified that it's allegedly secure. Uh, lots of hackers have verified it's allegedly not secure. Microsoft even has the famous article out there that says actually you know what? Hey, FIPS is great, but we're not really gonna promote FIPS validated cryptography anymore because. We actually believe that the government takes way too long to validate anything, and then by the time they do validate it, it's probably not really the most secure possible thing out there. Look, I don't make up these rules, okay? Uh, and, and I read the articles out there just like you do. Ultimately, at the end of the day, here's a compliance control. We have to meet it by law, and so therefore we gotta do what it says. Now, here's a good thing. We used to think that this control meant that uh, everything in your network that was transmitted had to be protected by FIPS validated cryptography, but that's been debunked. Okay, we actually were able to reach out to the folks that wrote uh, NIST SP800171. We said, hey, what's going on with this? And they said, no, no, you know, there's two ways to protect CUI. You can protect it using alternative physical safeguards, right? And that's the typical local network. So inside of your network or inside your LAN or WAN or whatever it is, you really don't have to protect uh, typical traffic with cryptography at all. That's not how it works. Now, again, we go into like site-to-site -site VPNs or we go into wireless networks where you can't physically protect it, then yes, those, those do have to uh, involve the FIPS validated encryption methods. But the good news is you do not have to go and necessarily turn on the FIPS mode in group policy that seemingly breaks every program ever made on Windows. Uh, so again, I know that's a huge confusion point uh, so I want to try to save you the frustration. Yes, there's a group policy about uh, FIPS validated cryptography. No, you do not have to turn it on just to be compliant. Your situation may specifically dictate what the right move is. So again, if you got questions, call us. Uh, again, it's another, another kind of one of those really tricky areas to know what the right thing is to do. But hey, uh, if we were to give a written answer to this, we'd say, hey, look, it's implemented. FIPS validated cryptography is used in any place where it is the only method used to protect the confidentiality of CUI. Uh, examples include FIPS 140-2 validated encryption implemented within the VPN and wireless networks, along with BitLocker private key encryption in FIPS mode on all mobile computing platforms. That's a great answer, okay? So again, if you're beating your head against the wall trying to figure out how to get it to work, uh, another great example is I once dealt with a client who had a wireless bridge and the wireless bridge couldn't operate with WPA2, and at that time, that was kind of what was needed to meet the FIPS 140-2 validation. Uh, and they were they were going to have to spend like five figures trying to replace this thing. And again, fortunately, we found another less expensive method of dealing with it. So again, this one is a little bit tricky, uh, but again, hopefully, our sample answer helps us, helps you out. And hey, if you need more help than that. No worries, we got your back. If you're trying to get compliant with DFARS, NIST SP800171, or CMMC on your own, and you're looking for some help, we can, we can, we can be that shoulder to, shoulder to lean on. Tear won't hurt us. Our compliance experts are always on call for you. Visit NIST800171compliance.com or check out the bio below for links to make life easy. There you can find more information and a shoulder to cry on and self-schedule time at your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website or learn more about our completely done for you services that can have you on your way to being compliant in just two to three days. If you love the content we're putting out here for you, awesome, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button or even better, smash that subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMMC certification everybody's going to have to eventually get through. And until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. I'll see you on the next one.